Here's a little riddle for you. It's green, starts with Ever, and it's a productivity app. If you're thinking of Evernote, you're wrong because today we're looking at Everdo, a local first made for GTD app that one of you guys let me know about through Twitter. I love receiving feedback like this from you all. So if you have any suggestions, leave a comment, send me an email, or drop me a message on Twitter or LinkedIn. Sequential projects, customizable keyboard shortcuts, and no subscriptions. Those are just three keywords that relate to this powerful tool that deserves a better rep in my opinion, which is why I'm reviewing it. The very first review on YouTube about this tool. Let's get into it. To use Everdo, download the apps from the website. Many operating systems are supported, including mobile. Under settings, you can set up dark mode, scaling size, archive retention, whether or not projects should be sequential and a few other settings. Now, whether or not you want to use sequential or parallel projects by default is a matter of personal preference. It really depends on what kind of projects you do most. And if you're not sure, I'll explain the difference later on in the video. I recommend hiding notes and shortening links off and the rest is personal preference as well. Under sync, you can set up multiple devices for your Everdo account and make sure the data is synchronized across them. Now, since you don't have to log in to use Everdo, account is not even the right exact word here. By scanning the provided encryption key on the mobile app, anything you do inside of Everdo will be synchronized across those devices. And to ensure data is transferred securely, I recommend keeping ignore SSL errors ticked off and auto sync ticked on for a smooth experience. Under keyboard, you can set up your own keyboard shortcuts for dozens of commands, which is amazing as you can select easy to type keyboard shortcuts for commands you used most often. Or if you're moving over from a previous app, you can copy over the shortcuts you used there so you don't have to retrain your muscle memory. To add items to the inbox, you've got a couple of options. Of course, there's the good old add to inbox button. The default hotkey for doing this is I. I like how the new item menu also has options to create new projects or notebooks for reference with these. More on that later. I love how Everdo has a global capture shortcut. This is a pop-up that appears over whatever you're doing so you can easily capture new inputs and move on, enabling you to retain focus. The default hotkey for activating it is Control plus E. It's a shame though that Everdo has no mobile widgets. However, you can hold the app icon and a quick add to inbox prompt will appear from there. Also, social sharing is supported. Just hit share wherever it's available and you'll find an add to Everdo inbox option. For defining what something is, you can easily turn something into a next action, someday maybe, waiting for, or scheduled item with a start date, as well as turning it into a routine. For tasks, you can select for multiple time estimates, define the energy level, and set up a due date if needed. For assigning context, you'll need to use the labeling functionality, which is a bit quirky. To set up labels, first you'll need to go to all areas at the top left. Under edit areas, you'll be able to configure three types of tags, area for area focus, contact for a person an item may be associated with, and label for context. You can also view this menu by pressing T and you can create tags while processing. The placement of this menu is a bit hidden and unintuitive in my opinion, but once you know where it is, it's easy to maintain and associate items with it. Use color coding for consistency and easy recognition. I make area tags purple, context tags blue, and contact tags orange. Of course, you can move items into a project list, including a predefined standalone actions list. Alternatively, for reference, you can move it into a notebook, which is where reference material lives, though the note-taking functionality is pretty bare bones with no markup supported, though it can be tagged. Projects can also be tagged, but with my recommended way of working, they should only receive tags for their related area of focus. What's cool is that entire projects can also be moved to someday, waiting, or scheduled, which will apply to all their associated tasks as well. Your items are spread across the various lists in Everdo, mostly projects lists. While projects are grouped on the left hand side under projects, it's not possible to group, expand and collapse them into folders based on their areas of focus. Instead, you'll need to use the separate areas menu, which will show only projects associated with that area. You can organize a project in two ways, parallel or sequential. If all associated tasks can be completed in random order, it's a parallel project. If there is an order to the task flow, you need to select sequential. After ordering the tasks, only the first uncompleted task 
will show up under the next view. From within the next view, you'll be able to see the action, complete it, and it'll automatically be replaced with the task after that, including a link to the associated project that you can click on. For a more compressed overview, both desktop and mobile apps allow you to hide associated description texts, leaving only the raw title and more items in your view as a result. If you want to look back, you can go to Archive under Cleanup. Press Move Completed Items to Archive to find a detailed rundown of tasks you've ticked off. While it's a bit bare bones, items are grouped based on a specific time period, like this week, for an easy overview. For reflection rituals like the weekly review, you could create a project under Someday and then set up checklists by creating a list separated with dash, add your questions that you want to ask yourself, etc. And then you can duplicate the project by pressing Control and dragging it into the project section on the left. A bit counterintuitive UX there, but that is how it works. From within any actionable view, you can set up filters, which is perfect for narrowing down a specific energy level time you have available, or of course, context through a label. By pressing the star on any item, you can add it to a separate focus list, which you can use to prioritize. And there's really not much more to it. And I actually like that. Everdo is simple, but effective. It provides you the information you need at the right place and time to get going and doesn't mess around with features that don't add to any benefits to someone who just wants to get going. Everdo has been around for a couple of years, since 2017. They have an active forum. The software's founder and maintainer, Andrei Streltsov, is active on there. And it's always good to see software builders in close proximity to its users to inform its development direction. Put local first on top and you've got a privacy-friendly alternative to apps that host your data on a centralized place that you cannot control. Lastly, the fact that a happy user reached out to me recommending I give it a shout out is a good sign. On the other hand, it is a one-man show and the user base is still small, which can put it at risk of not keeping up with the competition. Reviews on Google Play Store aren't as amazing with 3.5, but on Apple it gets 4.6 out of 5 stars. Pricing is simple. Either you use the free version, but this has some limitations around the number of projects, tasks, and notebooks, or you can go with the premium version. Instead of a subscription model, Everdo can be purchased for a one-time fee of 79.99 euros, granting you permanent access. Overall, Everdo really impressed me, and it is similar to Nirvana in many ways. That's something I noticed as well. I have a video on Nirvana on my channel too that you can check out. Their local first, no subscriptions approach though is unique in the productivity tech world from what I've been able to see over the past two years. Leave a comment down below whether you've used this tool, what are your experience with it, and what are your thoughts on local first in general? I am looking to learn more about this approach compared to the standard centralized data storage on a place that you cannot potentially control or check what's happening to your data. Thanks for watching. Make sure to also subscribe to my newsletter. You'll get one actionable productivity tip delivered to your inbox every Saturday morning. See you in the next video.